Hello info person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss a relatively new discovery when it comes to a very important feature, a feature known as a corona. And specifically we're going to be discussing a new study where the scientists were actually able to discover a way to observe corona around various black holes in the process of discovering that we might have actually been kind of wrong about its actual shape. In other words, this new study basically reveals what corona very likely look like. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess baby steps. Now let's start with basic definitions about corona and the basic anatomy of black holes. And let's actually start with this website you can find in the description, the anatomy of a black hole. And here in essence you can see the main features of a typical black hole independent of its size. And though most of them we actually covered in a lot of previous videos, today we're going to discuss the corona. A feature that's described as a tenuous, turbulent, billion degree cloud extending above and below the disk. Or at least that was the previous definition based on previous calculations and assumptions from before. But if visualized, it would resemble this. Basically a kind of a lamppost hovering right above the disk and responsible for some of the most powerful X-ray emissions. Here's a slightly different view of this and as you can see right there, very close to the black hole, that was basically believed to be the corona. And one of the reasons this was so important was actually because these x-rays for many years now allowed the scientists to kind of 3D scan a typical black hole. Here's the x-ray telescope on top of the International Space Station that was previously used to achieve this. And so basically by observing these very powerful x-ray emissions and by seeing the emissions from this corona, scientists were then able to apply a technique known as the x-ray reverberation mapping which uses X-ray reflections in an extremely similar way to how we usually use things like sonar. And so here, just like sound waves, these X-ray waves previously allowed scientists to map a lot of different disks around black holes extremely accurately. But based on the study we're going to be discussing today, it's now not entirely clear how accurate all of this was. And that's because, as you can see from this image, here the corona was imagined to be as some kind of an unusual protruding feature above and below the disk. But let's actually take a few steps back here and discuss these ideas of corona around the object that's a little bit more familiar to us, our sun. Many of you might have seen the eclipse in 2024, and during this eclipse there was a really really bright halo around the moon that's only visible during totality. And that's basically the corona of the sun. It's an extremely hot plasma extending millions of kilometers into outer space that despite being relatively low in density is surprisingly super hot. Compared to the surface of the sun that's measured in thousands of degrees, corona is millions of degrees. And exactly why is actually still unknown even today. This is one of the biggest mysteries of the sun. But we know that the sun has a corona that's basically spherical in shape. And it's also more or less diffuse and does not contain a lot of material. But we also know that a lot of other astronomical objects contain corona as well. But the question was always, are they actually similar in shape to what we observe around the sun, in other words spherical, or is the shape very different, potentially twisted and possibly extended like the way you see it here? Or is it basically just some kind of a plasma at the base of the jet that potentially is only present in a very small volume of space? In other words, this was the main question. How does this corona differ from the one around the sun? And we know that it definitely differs. For example, in terms of temperature. Even though the corona around the sun is about 2 million Kelvin, the ones around black holes have been observed to be in billions of Kelvin, so basically at least a thousand times hotter but only visible in the x-rays because of the temperatures involved. But naturally, just like with the sun, it's not that easy to see it. For the sun, for example, we can only see it during totality when the moon covers the sun and allows it to see everything around it. But for a typical black hole, it's usually difficult to see because of the enormous brightness of the accretion disk. The accretion disk produces a tremendous amount of light in different frequencies, and so trying to distinguish corona from the disk is very challenging. Challenging, but not impossible. And that's essentially the main point of this study by Lin Saad and her team. A comparison of the X-ray polarimetric properties of stellar and supermassive black holes. And here the idea was pretty simple. The idea was to observe various black holes of various sizes, but focusing on observations in the X-rays in order to determine the overall shape of the corona by specifically focusing on polarization. And here this was based on the assumption 
that the corona has to be inside the innermost region, extremely close to the edge of the black hole, where there's a tremendously low density, but also extremely hot plasma, basically the hottest plasma in the entire region. And so in this case, the corona around black holes would be this superheated region extremely close to the event horizon, with the gas eventually streaming into the black hole and some of the gas producing the jets. But in order to conduct these observations, they use NASA's IPXE telescope that's not just able to see the X-ray emissions, it's also able to observe various polarimetric properties, or essentially polarized light. But they also had to use a very similar trick to how we observe the solar corona as well. They basically somehow had to cover the super bright accretion disk in order to then see the corona. And here this was achieved by focusing on the orientation of the disk relative to us. And that's because sometimes we see the disk from this side, sometimes we see it from this side, and that's when most of the light from the accretion disk would be blocked by the dust torus, but some light, especially X-ray light, could still get through by scattering through the dust clouds. And so in other words, here they focused on various obscured and unobscured black holes, focusing on X-ray differences, and the obscured black holes are basically similar to an eclipsed sun, mostly because the light from the accretion disk in this case would be completely blocked. But because the corona is so hot and because it emits so many high energy X-rays, many of these X-rays would still get through, reaching the X-ray telescopes on Earth. And the focus was on some of the most studied and some of the most well-known black holes. For example, the ones in the Milky Way, Cygnus X1 and Cygnus X3, or the ones in the nearby Large Magellanic Cloud, known as LMG X1 and LMG X3. But also some really massive ones, such as the black hole in the Circinus galaxy, or NGC 1068, and NGC 4151. And in terms of mass and size, all of these black holes would be very different. Some of them are basically stellar mass black holes, only a few solar masses in mass, other ones are supermassive black holes. But, as the results reveal, they all contain corona and even create accretion disks of similar geometry. And so here by applying X-ray polarization and by probing the accretion geometry in these black hole systems, one of the first discoveries was that in every single case the corona surrounded the black hole in a very similar way and produced very similar X-ray properties. And specifically, here it looked like it was not really this way. Or in other words, this lamppost model was basically unlikely to be correct. And the corona was not hovering over the disk, but instead was surrounding the black hole in a disk very similar to the accretion disk, but obviously much closer to the black hole. In other words, if we were to imagine the model here, it would look something like this. It was not a sphere, it was not a lamppost, it was just a very flat disk. And by itself this completely redefines our models and presents the corona of black holes in an entirely different way. But also supports the idea that both stellar and supermassive black holes seem to have extremely similar geometry independent of their size. But once again, since corona is known to produce these X-ray flares, and these flares have been previously used to try to imagine the geometry of an accretion disk, now it's not really clear if these previous calculations were correct. Because before it was actually assumed that this was some kind of a lamppost, possibly above and below the disk. But now it looks like it's not. It's really much more flat and is basically all in the same plane as the spin of the black hole. But exactly what this means and what we're going to learn from all of this is currently unknown. Nevertheless, the main discovery here is that we might have been not entirely correct about the geometry of a typical black hole. And the corona in this case might not be an extended feature, but instead is just a really hot, really powerful, but also really flat disk which is of course very different from what we observe around the sun. But that's just one of the first discoveries. We'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some updates or once something is discovered in addition to this. But until then, check out some of the previous discoveries about black holes in some of the links in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.